Okay, okay, hear me out for a second. The whole click to photon input lag measurement isn't as useful as you might think. For those that don't know, if you've ever seen us reviewers report input lag or input latency results with one of these, NVIDIA's LDAT or Latency Display Analysis Tool, you've seen the click to photon input lag result. Hell, even when Linus used my open source response time tool, they only reported the click to photon latency. So if everyone, including me, is doing it, what's the problem? Well, the problem's pretty simple. It isn't measuring anything useful. It's measuring how long it takes for a click sent from the tester to go through to the system, into a game engine, then out to the graphics card, to the monitor, to register that input and do something with it. That sounds like a, a pretty good measurement though, right? I mean, it's literally what you do when you're playing your games, right? And it's useful to know how long that process is taking. And that's true, there's, there's no lie there, but there's more to it than that. Let's fire up CSGO with NVIDIA's LDAT, and I'll run you through how I normally test with this tool when I'm testing monitors. I generally just go to this wall, uh, make sure that the lobby has no bots, uh, set up LDAT to auto fire 20 shots, and let it have at it. Obviously it takes a little bit of time, uh, and I generally use this metal sign because it gives a, a much brighter flash, which is a bit better for LDAT to actually capture and notice. So let's take a look at the results, and it looks like we're averaging around 21 milliseconds here. But now I've restarted the lobby with bots, which obviously isn't quite the same as running it with real players, but for consistency's sake, bots are a lot better. I'm also gonna run to a bit more of where the action's happening, and I'm gonna run LDAT from here. Let's see how this differs, bearing in mind that everything else about this is the same. It's the same monitor, it's the same system, it's the same settings, it's just where I am in game has changed. And now we're getting an average of 26.4. Admittedly, it is a bit more consistent, but that is a higher latency. I'll overlay the two sets of results here and you can see that the second set are generally higher than the first. But if the only thing that was changed was what was happening in the game, why does the input lag change? Well, that's the thing. The majority of the time being captured here is how long your system and the game takes to do whatever animation you're asking of it. I ran some results in Cyberpunk 2077 on the same system and monitor and got an average of 44 milliseconds. That's wildly different from the CSGO result of like 20-ish milliseconds because Cyberpunk runs at a significantly lower FPS and takes longer to register those inputs. What's worse though is that here I am back in CSGO but this time I'm on Windows 11. Now uh, this is running all the same sort of settings, all that sort of stuff, obviously the same monitor, it's just a different system. So let's run LDAT again and uh, I think you might be surprised at the results. Again, I'm in the same part of the game, there's no bots, everything, you know, in-game, the methodology is the same. The only thing that's different is the system that I'm using to drive that. And, uh, yeah, uh, we're getting an average of 40.6 milliseconds. Again, in the same no bots runs, in the same, you know, setup, in-game, everything, even the same monitor, but we're now getting almost double the input lag. That's a pretty big deal. When you see a reviewer testing a monitor, or even the peripherals like mice with a tool like NVIDIA's LDAT, the measurements that they're reporting are specific to their system, to the you know, devices that they're using to test with, to the games they're using, to what even is happening in those games. The measurements that they are reporting do not translate to your experience and can't even be compared to other reviewers' results either. In fact, if they're not careful with how they manage their, their test methodologies and you know, equipment, they can actually not be comparable to their own results either. 
that's a pretty big deal. The problem with all of these measurements is that they look like this. A single time block, which starts when LNAT sends the mouse click over USB and ends when it detects the screen getting brighter from the shot. It's just one big block that we get to call the click to photon or total system latency, and that's it. But it isn't actually one single thing. It's made up of, I would say, three main blocks. The time it takes the USB controller to pull LDAT, which at 1000 Hz can be up to one millisecond. The time it takes for the game engine to receive that input and render a frame with the action in it, which is the majority of the time. And then how long it takes the monitor to actually draw that new frame. The important piece of information is really the only the, the last stage, or I suppose for peripheral reviews, the first stage. The bit in the middle only serves to complicate and ruin the otherwise useful information. Now, it is worth noting that you can still extract useful data from a tool like this, but that comes from direct comparisons with controlled variables. A reviewer that uses the same system, the same settings, the same game, the same situation in-game can directly compare results between, say, different monitors. Sure, you as a reviewer can't compare or can't then compare those numbers to another reviewer, but the fact that the test methodology stayed consistent means that the results can be compared within that set. As in a monitor that reports, say, 22 milliseconds is better than one that reports 35 milliseconds with the same setup. It is also useful for you as an end user. If you have one of these, you can tweak all of the game settings, the monitor settings, all that sort of stuff to get the lowest latency possible. And that's great. That's fine if it's an, an end user adjustment for your specific setup for your system, for your monitor, all that sort of stuff. But from a data science perspective, from a reviewer perspective, this has relatively limited use because of the ambiguity of the results. Still, wouldn't it be good to have uh, more certainty with the measurements, to be able to get rid of that, that messy bit in the middle and know just how long the monitor itself is taking? Well, I think so, which is why I bought a time sleuth uh, quite a while ago now. This is an open source input lag tester. It hooks up via HDMI directly to your monitor and displays a flashing pattern on screen and reports how long it takes for the monitor to respond. It's built using an FPGA or a field programmable gate array, which is actually kind of part of the problem. See, this caps out at 1080p 60fps. The FPGA just can't handle anything higher resolution or faster in the refresh rate department. And that's a bit of a problem for the many, many 1440p, 4K, and even just higher refresh rate monitors that are so popular. It's especially bad for 1440p displays as they can't just natively scale the 1080p signal up. The monitor actually has to do some computation to turn the 1080p frame into a 1440p one instead. And that means that you just don't get perfectly accurate results. Okay, so there has to be another way then, right? Well, sure. Simon from TFT Central uses a CRT display and a high-speed timer to compare to the LCD that he's testing. This is pretty accurate, although it does require you to have a CRT display on hand, uh, a way to output an analog signal from your GPU, or at least a DisplayPort to VGA adapter, and a bit of time and effort to capture and calculate those results. So are there any other options? Well, I have been working on something for months now to try and solve this very problem. Even better, I'm releasing it for free. It's part of the open source response time tool project, which means that anyone with one of these or uh, with the new pro units that I'm actually building uh, units for right now to, to go live with pretty soon. So make sure you sign up uh, to be notified on osrtt.com, link in the description. These will all work with the new mode. In short, I wrote my own DirectX 11 code to replace the Unreal Engine 4 build that I'm using. I'm still using uh, the UE4 tool for the response time measurements for now, but I will be swapping to the DirectX code soon once I confirm that all of the transitions are still accurate and reliable. 
The main reason for using my own code is that I can handle when the input comes in and record how long it takes for the frame to be rendered with that input. Coupled with the board's existing ability to tell me how long the USB polling delay was, it turns out that it's pretty easy to work out how long the display is actually taking to render that new frame. I also added a new set of options for the results view, which can now graph both each of the independent elements on their own and as a scatter plot for each on display result to see the consistency. You can also save both of those as images if you fancy. The variation that you might see here comes from the new frame taking an extra refresh rate tick to be drawn, but since the DirectX code isn't doing anything intensive, it's pretty easy for it to run at 1000 FPS without issue. I even had this running at 1000 FPS while rendering videos uh, using Handbrake, meaning my CPU was pinned at 100% CPU utilization already, and it still hit 1000 FPS, so I'd call that a win. As of this video going live, the update is already available on GitHub. If you've already got the software installed, the auto updater will do all the work for you. If you don't have an OSRTT unit though, you can pick up one of the last standard units that I have available right now, or sign up to be notified uh, when the even better pro units are available, which I'm hoping will be very Suit. So there you have a look at the, the click to photon latency and why it's not the most useful metric in the world. If you have any questions, suggestions or anything else, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want to, like I said, be notified when the pro units are available or pick up a standard OSRTT unit, there's a link to that in the description. It's just osrtt.com. If you want to support me and my work and my uh, my idiocy, then you can check out the rest of the links in the description as well if you don't fancy picking up a response time tool yourself. And uh, yeah, you can hit the subscribe button as always and the bell notification icon. Check out some of the other OSRTT videos on the end cards, including the one all about the pro. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.